The following presentation will explain the process for installing a new Proteus automatic tank gauging system, otherwise known as the controller. There are several common items located on the front panel of the Proteus K, X, and B controllers. They include the 7 inch touchscreen display, power indicator, fault indicator, alarm indicator. Mounted only on the Proteus K and X is the thermal printer. The printer itself has a combination power indicator, paper advance button. All Proteus controllers are intrinsically safe in UL, CUL, CE, and ATEX approved. Thoroughly inspect all packaging before accepting the receipt of the equipment. If you detect or suspect any damage or loss, you should notify the appropriate people and wait for authorization to open the package. The buyer assumes all risk for damage and loss of merchandise incurred during shipment and is responsible for filing and settling any claims. Prior to mounting, it is recommended to review the location of the controller, remote enunciators and displays, as well as sensors, probes, pump valves, and ethernet communications to determine the conduit paths needed to meet with the appropriate knockouts. Review the National Electric Code and federal, state, and local codes applicable to this installation to ensure compliance. As safety is the first concern, it's important to read and understand all installation manuals. Always block off hazardous work areas where vehicles and pedestrians might enter. Ensure proper fire prevention measures to keep sparks, flames, and other sources of ignition away from the hazardous area. You should not apply power until all equipment has been installed and wiring is completed and inspected. Automatic tank gauging systems, remote enunciators, and displays are not to be installed in a hazardous location. Only sensors and probes may be installed in those hazardous areas. The control is mounted on the wall using the mounting flanges and the proper anchors and bolts for the wall type. Do not remove any of the internal components in order to mount the panel from the inside. Allow 6 inch clearance around the controller for air circulation, conduit access, and other mounted equipment. Avoid installing in corners or where swinging doors can bang into the controller. The controller can be mounted outdoors with the use of a NEMA 4X weatherproof enclosure. A heater and a thermostat may be required. Important note, knockouts are used to separate the intrinsic and non-intrinsic compartments of the controller. Refer to the installation menu for the unit being installed for additional information. AC power cables must be installed in a separate isolated conduit. All RAS series enunciator cables must be combined in a separate isolated conduit. Alarm relay cables dealing with AC circuits must be combined in a separate isolated conduit. Note, the motor enunciators and alarm relay cables can be in a combined conduit when dealing with low voltage communications. MTT probe and sensor cables may share a separated isolated conduit, only limited by the diameter of the conduit. At no time should any holes be drilled in the controller housing. Follow electrical guidelines when connecting the AC power. Ensure the line, neutral, and field grounds are correctly terminated on the power connector. Power requirements for the controller is 100 to 240 volts AC on a circuit breaker rated at 15 amps. Warning, be certain not to plug in the power connector upside down. An earth ground is also required to be connected as it adds to the intrinsic safety of the controller. It must be a separate ground directly connected to the ground bar at the main service panel. This will also protect the unit from power surges. Other items that can help prevent power surges are UPSs and Omtex SP2 surge protector. Let's take a quick look at some installation issues seen in the field. Here we see that the external 4 to 20 milliamp converter box, the X232-420, was mounted butted up to the controller NEMA 4X enclosure. This did not allow for the door to open properly. This install was trying to save on the number of conduits used. The AC power and the low voltage communication lines are mixed in one conduit. Probe and non probable cables are mixed in one conduit, some of which just pass through the enclosure. This is another install trying to save on the number of conduits used. The probe and low voltage cables were mixed in one conduit. The hole was drilled to the intrinsic barrier to pass one cable to the non-intrinsic side. Also noted was the lack of a separate earth ground. Here the technician thought the wireless receiver needed an earth ground. 
Running the wire under the metal barrier reduces the intrinsic safety. Sometimes we don't have all the correct items needed to make a proper communication connection. Here the wiring is a mix of splices, leaving the connection exposed to the elements. Now let's look at probe installations. OnTech probes provide tank inventory data by monitoring product, water, and temperature levels. Alarm points can be programmed for different levels in the tank. The lower float monitors water. Single float probes are used when water monitoring is not necessary. The upper float monitors product. It is important to note that the minimum clearance required for probe insulation depends on the probe type, probe length, and the space above the tank. There are three types of MTG probes, rigid, flexible, and fixed bottom. Rigid probes are made with a stainless steel shaft. Flexible probes are made with a Kynar tube. Flexible probes can be installed where low ceiling clearance does not permit the use of rigid probes. It requires a minimum overhead clearance of 18 inches as long as the Kynar tube is not bent to smaller than a three foot radius. Flexible probes can provide up to 70 feet of tank gauging. Fixed bottom probes are also made with a Kynar tube and can provide up to 70 feet of tank gauging. All MTT probe accuracy is to 1 100th of an inch, have an IP68 submersion rating, and are intrinsically safe. Note, rigid probes may touch the bottom of the tank. The steps for installing an MTG-RS rigid stainless steel are as follows. Step one, insert the probe into the riser. Ensure spaker brackets and floats are positioned properly. Step 2. Lower the probe into the tank. Do not allow the floats to drop to the bottom of the shaft as this could damage the floats. Lower probe slowly until the probe foot touches the bottom. A sudden impact could damage the probe and or the tank. Step 3. Fit wire into the riser cap. Allow a 4 inch minimum height clearance for tank deflection. Step 4. Tighten cap and wire to junction box. Installing an MTG-FL top mount flex probe. The installation of the flex probe should be installed by two or more technicians. Care must be taken not to bend the tube to less than a three foot radius. Again, it's important to lower the probe slowly to prevent damage. The flex probes are installed one to four inches off the bottom of the tank based on the probe dimensions. They must not touch the bottom of the tank. Installing an MTG-FB fixed bottom flex probe. As with the flex probe, the installation of the fixed bottom probe should be installed by two or more technicians. Care must be taken not to bend the tube, and it's important to lower the probe slowly to prevent damage. A six inch opening is required for lowering the probe with its attached bottom weight. The spring assembly is installed to compensate for a floating roof movement. The fixed bottom probe can measure as little as one inch of water. The OWS oil water separator is a new enhancement to the Proteus features. It utilizes a rigid stainless steel probe. The main difference is the floats are mounted in an opposing direction. This configuration measures the height of oil floating on the top of water. This measurement can be as little as 0.1 inch. Information is gathered from the oil water separator tank for the correct programming of the controller. All extension cables used on the MTG probes must be Omtex EC2 or the Belden 8761. Belden 87761 can be used for direct barrier requirements. Note, if these cables are not used, unit performance can be compromised and it would void unit warranty. The probe cable has three color-coded wires, white, which is the signal, black, which is the signal ground, and green, which is the shield. This connects to the extension cable's drain wire. All probe cables must not exceed 1,000 feet in length and must be installed in weatherproof junction boxes. Make wiring connections. Use the SK4 connector sealing kit for all splices. Instructions are provided with the kit. This completes the probe installation section. In addition to wired probes, OMTEC also offers wireless systems. Data checkers are patented ISPPW, intrinsically safe, battery powered wireless, tank monitoring system, and operates on the line of sight principle. It provides high accuracy inventory measurements product level, water level, and temperature, and or overfill protection. Wireless probes operate in a similar fashion to wired probes, but use a wireless transmitter or data stick to communicate with the controller. 
Level float sensors can be installed for overfill protection and also utilize a wireless transmitter or fill check to communicate with the controller. Wireless receivers are generally mounted outside of the building where the controller is located. If additional range is needed or is there a limited line of sight, a repeater can be located between the transmitters and the receiver. The receiver gets wired to either an XB416 DC or an XB800 DC interface board. Multiple wireless boards can be installed in a Proteus X controller. Based on the configuration of the Proteus controller, up to 64 Bright Eye BX sensors can be connected to a four wire bus. BX sensors can be connected to the controller either by individual runs or by daisy chaining all the sensors. All BX sensors wind up being parallel on the sensor bus. A maximum of 16 BX sensors can be connected to a single XB416 interface board bus network connector. BX sensors are self identifying, providing the controller its type and its serial number. BX bright eye optical sensors operate on the principle of light refraction. With its convenient size and ability to detect liquids at any angle, these sensors are ideal for sumps, dispenser pans, containment areas, and annular spaces of double wall steel tanks. Under a dry condition, light from an LED bounces through a prism and is seen by an LED detector. The signal produced by the microprocessor sends a normal condition to the controller. Under a wet condition, the light from the LED is refracted away from the LED detector. The signal produced by the microprocessor sends an alarm condition to the controller. A conductivity electrode in a product distinguishing sensor determines if the liquid has conductivity and reports this as a water condition. The BXPDS and BXLS are general purpose sensors designed to accommodate a variety of applications. They are ideal for sumps, dispensers, and containment areas. The BXPDWF and the BXLWF sensors are used for the annual spaces of double wall fiberglass tanks and are easily installed and removed from grade. The BXPDWS and BXLS sensors are used for the interstitial space of double wall steel tanks and are also easily installed and removed from grade. The BX-RES sensor is designed for double wall brine filled tanks and is made of non-metallic corrosive resistant material. An alarm is activated to signal changes in reservoir liquid levels beyond acceptable limits, high or low. The BX-L series sensors are designed to provide product level alarms. These level sensors come in two standard sizes, but custom sizes can be ordered for different tank requirements. This completes the optical type sensors available for use in Proteus controllers. The BX-TC-1 temperature sensor is designed to monitor temperature ranging from minus 50 degrees to 150 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus or minus 1 degree C. Gas station convenience store owners can now monitor the temperature in their refrigeration and freezer units with the same four wires being used to monitor their fuel tanks. Owners can now be forewarned if temperature of their refrigeration goes out of range, preventing inventory loss. The BXLF1 and BXLF2 are non-optical level float sensors. These sensors offer multiple options including float material, float sizes, and mounting options. The BXLF sensor requires the use of a BXUT, or Universal Translator, to convert a dry contact switch closure to an electronic signal that the Proteus controller can recognize. The BXUT can also be used to connect non tech float sensors to our Proteus controller. The BX-VS vapor sensor contains an adistor to sense the presence of hydrocarbon vapor in a dry environment and a warm condition. The sensor can be configured as a relay activator source. The BXVS sensor must be placed so that the rise and fall water levels will not contact the sensor. All extension cables used on the BX sensors must be Omtex EC4, Belden 9940, or any 22 gauge or better twisted pair shielded cable equivalent. The sensor cable has four color coded wires plus a shield. Red is power, green is communications A, white is communications B, black is ground, and the bear wire is the shield drain. All sensor cables must not exceed 2,000 feet in length and must be installed in weatherproof junction boxes. Make wiring connections and use the SK4 sealing kit for all spices. Instructions are provided with the kit. This completes the sensor installation section. If your installation is an upgrade from an OEO 8002, 
to a produce controller, make note of the following cables and their knockouts as they will need to be rerouted. AC power, probes and sensors, pump controls or relay wiring, and remote enunciators. Tag all cables to identify connections for the probe tank numbers and sensor cables. Note the module number of the plug and module with the pin to wire color correlation layout as there are some slight changes between the two systems. The old probes, sensors, and remote enunciators can be used in the new system. Reroute the AC power, probes and sensors, pump control or relay wiring, and remote enunciator cables to the appropriate knockout for the model controller being installed. Reconnect the probes to the correct tank number. Reconnect all sensor cables to the sensor bus. Note, you may need to daisy chain depending on the amount of sensor cables. Remote enunciators will get connected to the MCU's J9 connector and possibly to an XBRB8 relay module. Pump controls get connected to the XBRB8. Note, correct programming will need to be entered or verified so that each relay operates the correct pump. Now let's take a look at some of the OMTEC accessories that can be used with the Proteus controllers. Besides the RAS series remote enunciator, we have a 4 to 20 milliamp converter, the X232-420-SRC, followed by our automation gateway, the C232.BAC, which converts Modbus to BACnet IP data format. We have a variety of remote displays, which includes the Mini-Me, RD7CTS, the Delivery Defender, RD7CTS-DD, Mini-Me with Printer, the RD7CTS-P, the Delivery Defender Light Series, DDLs, and the RD625 Digital Display. Refer to the individual manuals for installation and wiring, the Proteus controller would need to be programmed for the correct communication format. This completes the process for installing a new Proteus automatic tank gauging system.